Hey guys, this is uh, part two of my milkweed uh, videos. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, what's edible <coughs> on the uh, milkweed. So as you see here, I'm actually on the side of the property. There's the uh, the pond. And this is just where we stop mowing, and this is just all overgrown grass and weeds and stuff like that. You'll see there's a lot of milkweeds here, milkweed plants. Uh, this one's, here's one for example. You see the big broad leaves. Uh, this can be anywhere from four to nine inches long. So you see them scattered among here. Pretty easy to make out, you know, in comparison to the other uh, long grasses and weeds there. Uh, one thing I'll point out before anything else is that you'll see that a lot of these are green, like this, but plants like this, it's uh, off yellow, kind of reddish, purple. Um, you know, I'll give you a comparison. The, the color's off, okay? Now, I haven't read this in this book, but in the past, in plants in general, when a green plant and the green leaves uh, turn, you know, like reddish, yellow, stuff like that, it usually means a deficiency in some kind of nutrient. Uh, maybe nitrates or, you know, who knows what. But that's what it is. It's just not getting enough of something from the soil. So that's why the, uh, the color is a little different. However, most of the time you're going to find milkweed to be green, like this. And again, you'll see these uh, big pods, like I talked about in the first video. Um, but alright, let's go on and talk about uh, what's edible. Now, I did refer to uh, the book, as you see there, the other book I used in my blueberry video. Because um, it's a great reference guide and it has all the information I need. So, uh, the first thing you can do is you can eat the leaves, okay, on the top of the shoots. The very small leaves that are still tender. Okay, very small like this. You don't want them get, you know, eating anything that's much bigger than that. Um, because once they get bigger, they're just too, too fibrous, too chewy. Um, however, you do have to prepare them properly. Uh, you can't just pluck them off the plant like this and eat them. Uh, the leaves, as well as the shoots that you eat, have to be uh, boiled in two changes of water. Meaning if you collected a bunch of these little um, tender leaves on the top of the shoots, uh, you'd have to put them in a pot of water, boil them up, then change the water, okay, and put new fresh water in there and boil them again, you know, and then of course strain them off, and then you can eat it uh, sort of like you would prepare spinach. Um, so it's not, you're really getting rid of that kind of milky sap um, for the most part, but you're also tenderizing it, and uh, you know, then it's edible. Now when you, it, this right now it's uh, mid to late summer, um, but when these, the whole plants, the shoots are eight inches or less from the ground, uh, you can actually eat the whole shoot, okay? But again, same deal, preparing it the same way. You want to boil it in two changes of water. Um, now, unfortunately, looking at this plant here, I'm too late on the flowers. Now, here's where the flowers were, okay? They obviously, they, you know, bloomed and then they uh, died off. However, when the flowers are, are new, let me show you in the book. Even though this is black and white, it may be hard to see, but here's what the flowers look like. Um, you got a lot of little, uh, little bulbs you know, or, or pods, and it says it appears to look like broccoli, a head of broccoli, and uh, it's supposed to taste very similar. And you would do the same thing, pluck them off, um, you know, before the, uh, the little um, flowers open up, and then uh, same thing, boil them up. And it does, it's supposed to have a similar taste to broccoli, but I've never actually tasted it. Uh, however, you'll see how the plant works here. Once the flower dies off, the inside of the flower actually turns into the pod. You can see a very small pod forming there. And going down this plant, you see obviously a bigger one. And they got fairly large. If we go over to this plant, you'll see, you know, next to my hand here, these are probably four, a good four inches uh, long. And actually, up, oh, if you saw that, there's a butterf uh, monarch butterfly. How about that? Just talking about that in the other video. And there it is. It landed right on a milkweed. <laughs> Let me see if I can zoom in here before it flies away. Actually, it's not on a milkweed, but that is a monarch butterfly black and gold. Pretty cool. So there you go. There's, <laughs> there's just uh, some more proof on my information from my first video. Um, but anyway, that's, uh, I guess that's part two, just talking about what you can eat. Of course, with eating anything, any wild edibles, you want to get a couple different references. Uh, don't just go by what I say. I mean, I'm telling you what I'm reading in, in books and online and what I've heard from other people. However, you want to get a couple different sources of information before you go ahead and actually prepare and eat wild food, okay, because you don't want to get sick. But uh, anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video, and now you know how to, uh, you know, what parts of milkweed you can eat. So check in in the future. I will have more videos on this wonderful plant and all of its different uses. So once again, thank you very much for your time. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day.